This is what a factorized polynomial looks like. If you need to do a quick sketch for something like this, then all you need to do is three things. First, find out whether the graph is going to finish upward or downward at the end. Then you want to find the x-intercepts, followed by putting all this information together and drawing a few segments on the x-axis. When you connect those up, you get the graph. Today, I'm going to use six questions to show you how to do this. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you want to try it out for yourself before seeing my explanations. G'day guys, this is the math base. Does this polynomial finish up or down? To get this information, you will want to look at the negatives outside and on the x's inside. Upon inspecting this polynomial, we can see that there are no negatives outside and no negatives on the x's which means there are no negatives at all. That's the same as saying it is positive. So this graph will finish upwards. Now get your x-intercepts. It is just a matter of using the null factor law and solving for each factor equal to zero. So we have one negative two and positive three. Set this up on the x-axis, making sure to keep the intercepts in ascending order. Notice how three is the rightmost intercept. This means the curve is going to finish upward through this intercept. And so we draw a straight line through three going upwards. The reason they are straight is because each factor here is only repeated once. And each factor looks like y equals to mx plus c, which is a straight line. From here, all you need to do is work backwards to figure out what is happening at one and negative two. In order to connect to the segment we just drew, the segment going through one needs to go straight downwards and the one going through negative two needs to go straight upwards. The final step is to just connect them up, and now we have our graph. For our next question, there seems to be one negative outside and one negative on the x inside for two minus x. So there are two negatives in total, which when put together is still a positive, right? So the graph is going to finish up for this as well. Our x-intercepts are one, two, and negative three. The factors are still linear, so the curve is going to pass through each of these intercepts like a straight line. Two is our rightmost x-intercept, and the curve needs to finish upward through this intercept. So we draw a straight line going up through two. Following that logic, the line has to go straight down through one, and the line has to go straight up through negative three. This makes it possible to connect all of them without crossing over the x-axis more than three times. So with this third question, we can see that there are some repeated factors here. We will see in a moment what this means. The first thing you want to do is get the negatives. There is one negative outside and one negative inside. With the negative outside, it is not related to x. The x is being squared, but not the negative. So there's only one there. With the negative inside, however, the factor is one minus x to the power of two. That means there are two of these. So there are actually two negative x's, which means there's two negatives inside. In total, that means we have three negatives. Three negatives still creates a negative in the end, so the graph will finish down. Using null factor law, our x-intercepts are zero and one. But because each factor is being repeated to the power of two, that means it's behaving more like a parabola rather than a straight line. So the curve will have to touch the point and bounce off as if it's a turning point, like a parabola. On the x-axis, we can see that one is the rightmost x-intercept. In order to finish downward through this point, it has to curve with a sad face for the parabola. And going by that logic, the other parabola on zero also needs to be a sad face so that it can stay under and connect to one. For this next question, we have a negative on the outside as well, but there is something different going on with two minus x. Because that factor is to the power of three, just like in the previous question where we had two repetitions of that negative inside, this one has three repetitions. So in total, there are four negatives here. And four negatives put together makes a positive. So this graph will finish upward. Inspecting our x-intercepts of one and two, we can see that one will be some kind of straight line intercept, while two is going to have a cubic sort of shape going through it because it's a power of three. And two is our rightmost intercept. 
if it's going to finish upward through that point, it's going to have to use that upward cubic shape. So curve through two and then connect one to it by drawing a straight line going down. For our next polynomial, we have 1 minus x times 2 minus x squared times negative x minus 3. This is a fourth degree polynomial, and what we notice is that there is a negative inside the first bracket, two negatives inside the second bracket, and one negative inside the third bracket. And we're ignoring the negative 3 because that has nothing to do with x. So in total, there are four negatives here, making a positive, meaning the graph will finish upward. Our x-intercepts are 1, 2, and possibly 3 or negative 3. If we want to be sure, then just solve negative x minus 3 equal to 0 for x, and you will find that x is negative 3. So the tricky one here to look out for is the middle factor, because that is to the power of 2, meaning it's going to have some kind of parabolic intercept. It just so happens that 2 is the rightmost intercept on our x-axis, and it needs to finish upward through it, so it's going to do an upward smiley face parabola. By that logic, the line has to go straight through 1, climbing up, and the line has to go straight through negative 3, going downwards. Connect those up and we have our graph. This last one is more of a bonus question, but let's see how we go with it. Inspecting the negatives, there is a negative outside, and a negative inside the second bracket, and a negative inside the third bracket. However, there are three negatives inside that third bracket because it's the power of three, which means we have a total of five negatives, still resulting in a negative overall, meaning our curve will finish down. Next, we get our x-intercepts, negative two, positive three, and positive one. And also just make a visual note of what the shapes might be for each intercept. The first one could be parabolic, number three could be a straight line, and number one will be some sort of cubic. Drawing them out reveals that 3 is the rightmost intercept, and it needs to finish downward through that, so we draw a straight line going through downwards. Looking at 1, it needs to curve as a cubic upwards to connect to 3. As for negative 2, it has to connect underneath, so we draw a sad face parabola for that. Connect those up, and we have our crazy 6th degree polynomial graph. So I hope this video has given you guys a practical way to draw these polynomial graphs. If you found it helpful, please leave a like, and let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you would like me to teach. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so, and ring the bell if you want to get notified for future content. Thanks guys, see you next time!